down here in Naples, Florida at Everglades Ammunition. One of the co-owners of the business, Steve Bender, contacted me about putting on my 1911 gunsmith class. And this is a class I started several years back. It runs a little over a week long, about six days or so. And you take basically a box of parts, and by the end of the week, the students build a fully functioning 1911 pistol. And it's basically a hand-fitting class. We use a lot of really high quality parts I've used over the years. Caspian slides and frames, a lot of stuff from Wilson Combat, and, and the stuff is kind of sourced from Brownells. And I take them through the process of building a gun, slide to frame fit, barrel fit, you know, beaver tail fit, reliability, fitting the sights. We don't do any machining, we really don't have time for it here. But by the end of the week, preferably Friday around lunch, they'll be able to go out, test fire, and zero their gun. If they have any issues, they can come back and we can review and hopefully get back to the range. But it's kind of a program that's been tried and true. This is a class that I've run seven or eight times now with great success. As far as I know, I'm the only guy that takes the show on the road. There's other pistol smiths in the business that do it, but you have to go to their location. I'm the only guy that I know of that does it actually at other locations than my home shop. That comes about from my byproduct when I was in the military when I worked on 1911s. I would, when we were training somewhere, I'd take a box full of parts and a slide and frame and in my hotel room during the off time, I'd whittle on the gun. And that's kind of where I learned the procedure to be able to do the stuff essentially out of a box or a bag. And that's where it comes from. It's a big hit. Like I said, I've run seven or eight of them. The students are digging it so far. Hopefully here in a couple days, we'll be test firing the guns. When we start the class out, first thing we do is a parts inventory. And then right off the bat, we get into the slide to frame fit. Cause that kind of sets the stage for the next part, which is the barrel fit. As soon as the students have the slide to frame fit down, we get right into the barrel fit because experience has taught me that that's the most important aspect to building the 1911. And in the course, that's the one message I want to get across, that hand fitting these parts, and particularly the barrel, is a really big deal. That's kind of the engine and transmission of the gun. And if you don't do that right, it affects everything else on that gun in terms of how accurate and how reliable it is. The next thing up is the beaver tail fit. Cosmetically, it has a huge impact on how the gun looks as a finished firearm. In addition, the beaver tail plays an important role in terms of how you index the gun out of the holster and how comfortable the gun is to shoot. So experience has taught me teaching these classes that after the slide to frame, then the barrel fit, the beaver tail fits next. And then after that, there's a laundry list of things we fit. But those are the big three that we have to knock out right at the beginning of the class, the first few days that sets us up for success later on down the week. In some cases, in order to get more beaver tail travel, you really should take some material off down here. And yours is a good example. Your beaver tail really doesn't come out that far. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't hurt in order to get a little bit more travel involved. So it's a little bit more positive feeling. Take some material here so it swings out a little farther. And yours is a good example of that. Okay. You, know, you really do want to have a little bit more travel. You're correct on where you're fitting it up here, but in order to get a little bit more travel, you want to That's take a little right bit here. of material so it swings out a little farther. Okay. It's both passion and occupation, if you will, because you know firearms are involved with a lot of what I, I've done and probably will continue to do but also I'm a gun guy and 1911's an icon. Chance to take a pistol smithing class from Larry's kind of like taking cooking lessons from Emeril Lagasse, except it's more like taking kung fu lessons in the movie Kill Bill because you get abused a lot more. Well, I've been working on, you know, some 1911's, uh, you know, for probably 15, 20 years, but there's a lot of little things that you just never know about till you come to one of Larry's classes and you pick up on a lot of things that makes a big difference in your build, um, you know, how, how the gun works and so forth. So I've learned a lot, sure have. Now remember the 1911 is really the sum of its parts and how well it's assembled. So you have to pay attention to detail all along the line. If you let the ball drop on something down the line, it could certainly ruin the gun, particularly in the area of fitting the thumb and the grip safety. We're fitting the uh, grip safety right now. And making sure the key thing in here is here that one it blocks the trigger but also you don't have to depress the grip safety quite so far in order for the gun to fire that could be a critical aspect if you have to draw the gun quickly let's say in a gunfight or you're injured and you have to bring the gun up on target you may not have the best grip in the world you want to make sure that the gun can go bang that the grip safety works as advertised it blocks the trigger but it doesn't do it in a fashion that can affect you firing the gun when you need it to see what you got. Well, I've been a, a gun enthusiast 
uh, all my life and especially interested in the 1911 pistol. I ran across an article uh, about Larry several years ago in American Handgunner. Became really interested in the way he constructs pistols. I'm in the process of setting up my own pistol smithing business and I thought this would be a really good uh, stepping stone in that direction. I would still take some off so okay. you don't have to depress quite so far because you got to depress a pretty good ways here. Yeah, for sure. I would trim it a little bit more, but other than that, it's looking good. So how much grip safety travel is preferable? Good rule of thumb is somewhere around one third, no more than half the travel of the grip safety in order for the gun to fire. Yeah, if you go too little, that can kind of get you in trouble, but you want about roughly one third. I've been working with 1911s for about two years, picked up an old original 1911 and just progressively got more interested in it. Working with Larry, is, you know, it's, it's great. I mean, he's, he, he moves quickly. Sometimes you fall behind a little bit and you gotta dig a little deeper and catch up. And then it's great having other people in the class to help you out too and keep you moving along. You're, you're on the right track though. Take, but you wanna- at the bottom? Or yeah, not? you wanna continue to do it right here. A little more there. Yeah, okay. so you don't have to push it quite as far, okay. quite as far, but yeah. But you like the travel of the grip safety. Yeah, I think it's fine. Great. Fitting some of the parts, uh, lapping things together, um, just little secrets that, that uh, Larry knows from, from the experience that he has that just make a big difference. Stuff that, that you um, kind of trudge through and Larry you know, tells you about something, you go, oh yeah, that, that would have made that a lot easier and it works better, yeah. In this case, he's gonna have to clear his grips at the top because what's happening is when he brings the safety down, it stops there and you can see the top edge of the thumb safety would interfere with the travel of the slide, which slides along this track right here. You look at what the source is, what their background is, and then how they teach, and Larry's got that, you know, he's the total package in that regard. You know, tier one operator for many, many years, not just a one and done sort of thing. Uh, excellent instructor, I mean, I, I've learned more from him and you know, his mentor, if you will, Ken Hackathorn, than I have from many other firearms instructors. You can always learn something from Larry. You just gotta, you know, pay attention. Hey guys, Stoney discovered something here. Just the way this thing works, you gotta take a fair amount of metal off to get any real appreciable travel difference down here. Just the way it works, you're not gonna, so you're gonna have to file for a while in order to get it to really, for it to really swing much different. It's just the way it is. I am a Wilson Combat dealer. Um, Wilson Combat uh, generously provided me uh, with the opportunity to purchase one of their slide frame fits uh, that they do in house, where the slide, the frame is fitted at the factory along with the barrel. The other, all the other components that are not fitted and you have to uh, customize them to uh, fit the uh, frame and slide. So there's still work you have to be, that has to be done to them, but I wanted to see how close and how accurate uh, their slide to frame package deals were and so I decided to buy one of those and bring it to the class for Larry to inspect and to tell me how good a quality it is. It wouldn't hurt honestly for you to do a little bead blast here. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'll polish that part and then I'll bead blast and see what else I need to do. Did you blend the sides to the frame? Hey one thing gang on, on your beaver tail, don't forget to blend the sides onto the frame. I know a lot of you have already done that, but you want that beaver tail, a lot of times they'll be a little uneven, the, the frame and, and the beaver tail, so you want to blend them together. They start with oversized parts, that's the thing. They're not starting, in this case, in this class, they're not starting with a complete functioning pistol to start with. They're starting with a bunch of oversized parts, stuff that has to be gunsmith fit together. Now, when you do it right, at the end of the day, you end up with a really good, long-lasting, accurate, and reliable firearm but there's a lot of little attention to detail that goes along the way. And you have to have the ability to kind of roll with the punches. Not everything is just gonna to fit together the way you, you would imagine it would. With 2011 being the 100th anniversary of the 1911, I'm sure a lot of viewers watching this program probably bought their first 1911 last year. Now, if you're a shooter that started on something like a Glock or a Springfield XD or a Smith & Wesson M&P, there's something you need to be aware of, and that's the thumb safety. 
more so than even the grip safety. The thumb safety can cause you problems with a 1911 if you're not careful. Meaning, what I have to do when I take the weapon off safe and I'm ready to fire, I have to account for this thumb. I have to get it out of the equation. Now there's two grips that I teach shooters in my training classes when we have the 1911. One is for new shooters, is kind of the grip, what I call fist on top of fist, which is a grip we still use for revolvers to this day. And it's the grip I learned on back in the day. It's a real good grip for pinning that hand down. It's real secure. The downside to it is you're lower on the gun and you have more muzzle width. As you evolve and become more proficient with the 1911, you may switch to what we call the high grip or the thumb forward grip. And that's where the thumb rides on top, the thumb safety, and actually uses it for leverage to help counter recoil. And then this hand wraps around and you have the thumbs pointing forward. It's a great grip, does very good job of countering recoil and muzzle flip. The issue is there's nothing really locking this hand in place except clamp pressure. So if you're not real diligent about how hard you vice down, you'll be constantly losing your grip. Regardless, whether you use the fist on top of fist or the high grip, you have to make sure that this safety is taken out of the equation because if not, and you use some other type of grip, at some point during the game, you can bump the gun on safe at the worst possible time. Okay, after the beaver tail's done, we get into a variety of things then. We fit the sights, we fit the trigger, we start fitting the hammer, sear, and disconnector. And these are all important tasks, but they're not big major muscle movements in terms of building the gun. It all comes together to make it a complete gun at the end of the week. I've gone through several armors courses in the last six to eight months. This is another one that's in, in a long line of them. Probably the best one I've ever taken. Uh, shows me a little nuances of the 1911. I've learned a lot about them. I've learned a lot what breaks them run. I've learned what's the good points and a lot of the custom fits. And then you put this, what you do is, like that, to support it. And then generally you'll put it in the vise, yeah. If you can imagine taking a big box of parts, and this is exactly what it was, a big box of parts, and fitting every one of them to mesh and it's not as, it's almost as if you're learning, if you were in the vehicles, learning to drive Mario Andretti. I mean, you look at Larry Biggers, everybody knows his resume, you know how great of a gunsmith he is. I feel it's a huge privilege and a blessing to be able to learn from him. So he's telling me, you know, a no BS, you know, direct answers in terms of what works and what doesn't. And for a custom 1911 manufacturer, those are the small, you know, the devil's in the details. Those little things do matter. Larry's been a very patient instructor. <laughs> Uh, which you needed to be at times. Um, all different kinds of uh, people from all kinds of perspectives of life here, uh, amateur, uh, just firearm enthusiasts, along to full-time gunsmiths and stuff. So it's really been a good cross-section. You can also, the rails on the inside, peen those just a touch here and there, and it'll get some of that play out. But what I do is I'll, I'll profile the back of this on the belt sander. The big benefit for me is everything that I've learned at building the 1911s has all been mainly self-taught and it's nice to have uh, somebody who knows what they're doing be able to teach you for a week and show you what you've been doing wrong, what you've been doing right, validate some of the things that you've, you've figured out yourself and uh, just the, the level of instruction is great. You come away with different techniques of doing the same thing. I mean there's several ways to skin this cat thing that appeals to me about Larry's approach, he's more about making the pistol run reliably and not uh, into a lot of complicated measuring of parts and everything. He's more of, of uh, eyeballing the parts and, and doing it all by hand. He's got a reputation for guns that, that are reliable and that run and uh, you know, I, I trust that uh, these pistols will run at, you know, after we get out to the range. We haven't fired them yet so who knows. All right, guys, we're going to start the test fire procedure. The way this is going to work is from 10 yards, and that's the distance we're going to use for you guys to get a group. Ideally, the size of the 10 ring down there, at least the group you can cover with the end of your fist. I want you to shoot one magazine. We're going to see where it's at, and then we're going to come back and file on the sights. Once we get your zero to kind of where it needs to be, remember, we're looking for elevation, not windage. Windage is not a big deal. You can easily adjust that with the rear sight. Once we get your elevation to where it needs to be, then we're going to go into what I call the test fire procedure. I have a certain procedure that I run the guns through that kind of help bring out any bugs that might be in there. 
So let's start the zeroing process first. Keep your slides locked to the rear, keep the muzzles down, all right, and only load up on the line. When you're done shooting your one magazine, clear the gun out. We'll see where we're at and then come back and file on the site. You guys ready? Then grab your 45s. If you're ready, load them up. Nice slow fire group. All right, guys, let them hang on safe. Basically, muzzle down. Let's go check them out. All right, what do you got here, Steve? Uh, six o'clock hold, right okay. there. Okay, you're and pretty close. I, I jerked one or two. You're pretty sure. close. Honestly, I don't know. You could fall on it just a touch, but you might just want to hold what you got. If you can head back, we're gonna load back up and whatnot. We need to pace the targets here in a minute, but you, neither one of you touch yours. You're real close and you need to shoot a better group. You can see the sense of satisfaction they have when they go out at the end of the week test fire the gun and the gun functions. It really makes them feel like they've achieved something. They've, they've been able to pull off something that maybe before they started the class, they didn't know if they could do it or not. Well, it was, it was kind of cool, you know, uh, watching Larry explain things and go through it, building the gun and then going out. and actually went bang, you know, every time. So yeah, I was, it was cool. Well, the range was pretty neat because everything worked. We had all working guns, 50 some parts all laying on a table at the beginning of the week. and filing and pretty new at this so to have a perfect working gun it's the nicest shooting thing I own so it's uh, it's neat. It always feels good it's um, it's a culmination of a lot of we spent a lot of hours here this week but uh, the end result is, is always gratifying when when you can take a bunch of parts that don't fit together and have a functioning reliable pistol at the end of the week. Well we went through the the test firing phase of the class and went through all of Larry's uh, test for the weapon, and I was very pleased that the, the uh, 1911 I built from Wilson Combat performed very well. Class was probably one of the best classes I've ever been through, and I'm, I'm a bit of a training uh, nut, so I've gone through a lot of uh, classes. So this was probably the most technical class I've ever seen, and one that I've learned a lot that I can apply to my my day job. So that that was worth its weight in gold. Larry's function fire testing was uh, something I hadn't heard about before, and that was a you know, really a good thing to know to be able to test the pistols and make sure they're reliable. Um, shot really well. I was really impressed with the recoil on it, um, how smooth it is. Um, one of the tricks that he taught us in, in setting up the 45s. Range time was great, always is. It's a kind of a, a nice closure to it. It's not like just putting an AR together. You're really pretty intimate with the weapon by the time you get it put back together. The amount of detail that is put into the, to a build I could, I would have never ever imagined, I couldn't fathom the amount of work that goes into a quality 1911. Now I have a pretty good idea, and while you had some of the long lead times with a lot of the, the you know, good gunsmiths out there, you know, like Wilson Combat or that's where Ed Brown, you, I see why they, you, you got a long wait on those because it takes time to do them right. For those that are serious about 1911s, that are willing in to put in the uh, sweat equity, the mental equity, and unfortunately financial equity, you can't beat this. Uh, it's a great, great experience, but it's not for the timid. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.